The magnitude of the turmoil brought about by the offshoot of the COVID-19 pandemic has caused not just anxiety and fear from among us in the academe, but also uncertainties in everything that we do. Yet as humans, we take into our primordial concern the security of our family members and the stability of physical and mental health. But the GDCE program of the PSEP this summer has made me realize equally important lessons in life as a PSEP faculty. While others are stressed with powerlessness and drained with emotional anxiety, I was rather occupied thinking of several means on how to successfully deliver quality learning experiences with the GDCE scholars from the two universities I was assigned to teach in an online modality last summer. Needless to say, I honestly experienced doubts as to whether I will be able to do it or not. Being new to the so-called new normal in the teaching modality, using technology-based instructional plans, materials, and learning management engines. At that time, the only edge that I have in hand amidst all worries and challenges was the fighting spirit which propelled me to proceed in the delivery of the essential cultural knowledge infused in the lessons through culture-based methodologies and pedagogies. So, I then made an outline on the things that I had to prepare to organize my moves or my steps despite alienation on what's going on around us. First, I reviewed the syllabus for Colad 209 or the development of culture-based lesson exemplar. I developed course outline as to identify the distribution of topics. I prepared templates to be used by the scholars. I created storyboard for all the videos of my lectures for asynchronous learning. I successfully recorded eight videos as my main teaching materials, which can be accessed by scholars who have unstable internet connections. The video contained inputs, lectures, suggested shortened URLs for further readings, assigned daily tasks, and engaged them to self-directed activities to enable scholars to use online educational platforms, sites, and applications. I also utilized the Google Classroom and Messenger apps to facilitate the successful delivery of lessons. With all the things I did to make myself equipped in this academic battle, one thing I think is relevant nowadays is one's knowledge or capacity in utilizing technology-based applications, machines, systems, operations, and gadgets for teaching. If we find all these things far beyond our grasp, then the quality of teaching and learning might be at stake in the new normal, especially that our scholars are teachers in the public school themselves. Their learners are more or less adept to using technology nowadays. According to John Sealy Brown, today's digital kids think of ICT as something akin to oxygen. They expect it. It's what they breathe, and it's how they live. Well, I guess this is something that our educators and scholars should also take as an inspiration in their culture-based pedagogies, which is to make use of ICT in their advocacy. This time, let me show you how I deliver the flexibility of my culture-based lessons in class while utilizing technology through a synchronous online learning modality in the course Col Ed 209 last summer. Good day, dear scholars, and welcome back to our class. This is session seven of Col Ed 209. Every teacher has his own teaching style to engage learners towards a degree of attention, interest, curiosity, and optimism. He tends to adapt his teaching approaches, methodologies, techniques, and strategies to the needs of his students. Teaching with the 21st century learners is a bit of a challenge, 
due to their broad knowledge on wide range of information sources. Their exposure to the technology enables them to acquire advanced information on anything under the sun, perhaps including the contents of your lessons in your class are within their grasp. We teachers have a critical task of keeping the class alive and interesting. Despite the reality that there are learners who seem to be more advanced than others and may result to boredom as the teacher pays more attention to slower ones. With the diversity of our learners in the class, the teacher must do his best on keeping the learning environment as interesting as possible. I am not suggesting that the teacher must be an entertainer inside the classroom, but the one who motivates learners to learn and engage them in the learning process. His teaching style must address the needs of his learners despite the diversity of their learning levels. As I have emphasized in the previous sessions, we must begin by knowing our learners, not just by name, but with their strengths and weaknesses. In other words, profiling your learners. But as much as possible, teach within the bounds of the content standards performance standards, and competencies in the contextualized curriculum. I know that you are already saturated with a lot of information and theories about teaching approaches, teaching methods, teaching techniques, and teaching strategies. But then in a way, let's have a quick review of these, and let's see how you can apply this to your culture-based lesson exemplar. Teaching approach, teaching methods, teaching techniques, teaching strategies are interconnected, necessary in the teaching process to be able to flesh out essential learning outcomes and values out of the contents in your lesson. Teaching approach is a set of principles or ideas on the nature of learning communicated into your classroom. These are some commonly used approaches in teaching, and this can be teacher-centered, inductive, deductive, evaluation approach, and child-centered approach, like the differentiated instructions of Carl Ann Tomlinson. Teaching method is another systematic way of teaching or pedagogy. This is a systematic way of presenting the subject matter, arranged in a manner that allows orderly learning. This aids the learners to grasp the concepts with ease, from easy to more advanced than to complex. Here, the teacher identifies appropriate activities in order to teach. In short, method is a procedure within an approach. Teaching method can either be participatory or non-participatory. When we say participatory, students are in constant interaction, active involvement, and continuous exchange of views and ideas in the overall teaching and learning experience. Non-participatory means learners are presumed to be passive and are recipients of knowledge from the teacher. Examples of such are lecture method and demonstration method. Teaching technique is a series of steps followed by the teacher in order to teach. These are organized ways cascaded from the type of method used by the teacher. This is the teacher's personal ways of accomplishing the objective of the lesson. Teaching technique applied may vary from one group of students to another, depending on the situation. Teaching strategy is the mode of operation of the teacher in teaching to be able to facilitate students' learning. 
This is to identify some teaching policies or standards to achieve the objectives. In your culture-based lesson exemplar, please establish consistency in the use of cascading flow from the teaching approach, teaching method, teaching technique, and teaching strategy. Please make sure that the teaching process allows maximum level of learning engagement and participation with consideration to diversity of their skills, their learning preferences, their culture, and most importantly, contextualization. Today, you will start crafting your lesson exemplar, and here are some guidelines flashed on your screen. For this task, you will have task 6 as basis of the concept in developing the task 7, which is the culture-based lesson exemplar. Please cascade the task 6 content here, but make sure to elaborate them further to make your lesson exemplar more understandable and creative. Here's also the lesson exemplar sample format as your guide. You will see the heading, the lesson title, objectives, and the resources. You will also see the procedure from pre-teaching activities to the lesson proper. Please also include wrap-up activities and valuing assessment, and assignment or agreement. Please take note that it is also important to be creative in the assessment of the learning progress to close the gap between a learner's current situation and where they want to be in their learning and achievement. As much as possible, use rubrics to assess the students' performance and products. Please check the link for rubric samples and in how to create and use rubrics depending on the nature of the assessment of learning. Submit your work to me for suggestions to enhance further your lesson exemplar. Goodbye for now, dear scholars, and God bless us all. We may not wish to acknowledge the occurrence of uncertainties in our life along the way, but it's natural and unavoidable to experience crisis. It's part of our life. The coronavirus pandemic has made us realize that life can change very quickly and unpredictably. But this does not mean we will be at a losing end when these come our way. Instead, we make this as a turning point to become more creative to think for survival and to use the essential cultural knowledge that our ancestors have paved for us. Be adaptive to technology, most importantly, to sustain our advocacy for cultural education.